Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson of how to speak Bosnian. Today we will be learning about the Bosnian language in the sense of its origin. What is the Bosnian language? Stay with us. Okay, so here's a really quick uh, overview of what we will be talking about today. Uh, so we are talking about the origin of Bosnian language. Uh, it is internationally recognized. Um, we're talking about history, Slavic migration, South Slavic language family, where this language is coming from or it belongs to. Uh, we're talking about the Serbo-Croatian linguistic family and uh, um, its relationship with Bosnian language. Uh, Yugoslavian standardization, we're talking about breakup and nationalization. Um, and the last uh, slide, we'll be talking about linguistic differences between Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, and other languages in that region. So in this slide, as I mentioned, I will not be teaching you how to pronounce things. I will be teaching you mainly the history and the origin of Bosnian language. Stay with us. For those who um, question or for those who wonder if Bosnian language is actually like an actual language. Uh, so the fact is that it is. Uh, Bosnian language is recognized by various international and multinational organizations. Some of them are listed here on this slide. Uh, as you can see, it's recognized by the International Organization for Standardization, United States Board of Ge uh, on Geographic Names, the Permanent Committee on Geographical Names, United Nations, and UNESCO. So Bosnian language is internationally recognized language. Speak Bosnian language are Slavs. Who are Slavs? Slavs are um, migrants, were migrants, who came to Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, and uh, uh, southern uh, uh, Europe from, as you can see in the picture above uh, on the right side, they came from Russia, Ukraine, and that area. So they were migrating slowly down to south, closer to the Med Mediterranean. And they stopped in that in in a in a Balkan in the Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, and those were Slavs. Time uh, there were two major empires. There was Byzantine and Frankish empires, and between between them there was this whole lot of land that was not controlled by anyone, and so South Slavs saw that as an opportunity for them to settle and not being controlled by anyone. And that's how Slavs from Russia and Ukraine stayed and came and settled in the Balkans and in Bosnia. Slavic languages are divided among many dialects from the, that become from a word što or what, as you can see in the picture here. So we have što is Western Stokavian, šta Eastern Stokavian, Kai, Kaikavian, and Cha, Chakavian. So as you are now learning Bosnian language, so this is a great example to teach you what kind of um, dialect Bosnian is. And it, because you know, it, you would say Šta for what, you know that that is Eastern Stokavian dialect. Slavia came about in 1945 and lasted until 1992. At that time, there were three main official languages in Yugoslavia. One was called Serbo-Croatian, one was called Slovenian, and one is Macedonian. So what came later is that Serbo-Croatian became divided upon Serbian, Croatian, and Bosnian. But during the Yugoslavia times, there was one unitary language that, were, uh, that had two regional normative varies. So one was Eastern, that was Serbia, Montenegro, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And the second one was Western, which was Croatia. The majority of us are familiar with um, the war in Bosnia and Croatia and Serbia. Uh, in 1990s, um, we know that linguistic differences became very important. So when you go to Bosnia or Croatia or Serbia and the way you speak will determine who you are and what nation you belong to. 
So all of these Serbo Croatian, Bosnian are now split into multiple national nationalities. And then, as I just mentioned, linguistic differences are a tool for na uh, nation building in this area. Someone like you who is trying to learn this language, you may be wondering, well, how is Bosnian different from Serbian language? How is Serbian different from Croatian? Is this all just one language? The answer is yes and no. This language is about the same, but it is not. When I say that, what I mean is that we are able to understand each other. When I say we, I mean people from the Balkans, like Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro, and so on. We can understand each other, but the grammar is not the same. So for example, here we have uh, the very first uh, Pravopis Bosanskog Jezika. Pravopis Bosanskog Jezika is the very first Bosnian grammar. This grammar was published by Sanahid Halilovic and in 1996. And in this grammar in book is where uh, the first time the um, the, the first time that, that someone actually identified this Bosnian language and said that what, 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 what words are uh, normative kind of like for Bosnian language. And so Bosnian language is different uh, from Serbian or from Croatian from its usage of H, letter H, H. So every time when you read Bosnian and if you see a letter H, letter H is pronounced as H and you will need to pronounce it. Okay. The reason why Bosnian language differentiates from Serbian, Croatian, and other languages from that region is its influence from Turkey and Turkish words. So let's hear some um, example of uh, Turkish words in Bosnian. Okay. So alat means tool, a tool. Bar or or um, barem means at least. Boya color, bokal, pitcher, bubreg, a kidney, and budala, or a fool. Very important thing uh, for Bosnian grammar or for Bosnian language and pronunciation is that the pronunciation of the word or of the letter, I'm sorry, H or H. So in Bosnian language, you will always, absolutely always pronounce letter H, but you will say H. Huh. So how will you know um, that someone is from Bosnia, someone's from Croatia, or someone's from Serbia if you're all at a bar somewhere in the United States? By the way, they say coffee. Okay, so Bosnians would say kahva. Kahva, but for example, myself, I say kafa which is Serbian, because it's just the way I say it, and it doesn't matter. But a lot of people would actually say it just the way the people in their country say it. So, like, if you're from Bosnia, you should say <laughs> uh, kahva, kahva, Serbian kafa, kafa, and Croatian, you would say kava, kava. And that's one signifier for you um, if you're speaking to someone from Croatia or Bosnia or Serbia. When you're talking to them, uh, just just listen for the sound H in, the, in their uh, vocabulary. If when they speak, if they don't say a lot of H, you will know for a fact that they are not from Bosnia. They're probably from Croatia or Serbia. Here is a little bit more examples of, um, of uh, spelling differences between Croatian, Bosnian, and uh, Serbian. Um, so, for example, the, the very first uh, example we have here, the point, that's an excellent example, just because in Croatian, absolutely everyone will say točka, točka for point, whereas Bosnians will say tačka, tačka, and Serbians would say probably, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think they say tačka as well. Uh, Serbian and Bosnian actually say a lot of words uh, similarly, more similar than Bosnian and Croatian. So for example, you have here scientist. Scientist would be znanstvenik in Croatian. Again, znanstvenik. In Bosnian, you would say naučnik. 
scientist is Naochnik. Uh, and another example, I'll, I'll, this will be my very last um, example. Uh, we will say uh, correct. In Croatian, you would say točno. Točno for something that's correct. In Bosnian, you would say tačno. Tačno for something that's correct. Okay, and then if you want to see more, more examples, you're always welcome to come back to this slide and go over all these examples that we have on this slide. And you can always ask me questions and I will try to explain them in the comments. Uh, this is yet another example, uh, yet another uh, example slide. Uh, we here we have 1000, which is this is also really important for you if you want to know special differences between the languages, because in Bosnian you would say hiljada, but you can also say tisuća. For example, if you're from the south Bosnia where uh, there's a lot of more Croatians living in, and they have um, they, they have adopted more Croatian um, linguistics kind of um, vocabulary than the Bosnian one. Uh, January would be Siechan for Croatia, Januar for Bosnia, Januar for Serbian. Uh, the same, uh, everything else is just, for example, uh, Century, you have Stoljeće for Cro Croatia, uh, Vijek for Bosnian or Stoljeće. Um, and the same go Vijek goes for Serbian. As you can see that in Bosnian, for example, you say Vijek. Do you see V I J E K? And that means Vijek, meaning century. In Serbian, you see that's the same word, but spelled differently. They have V E K, Vijek. So they will not say I and J. So that's another difference, difference between Bosnian and Serbian is that Serbians will not say uh, a, a lot of I and J's, but this is a good topic for next lesson or one of the future lessons. Seen uh, examples and, and you learn a little bit about the history of the Balkans and the Bosnia and the language of Bosnia, how it became about. Uh, you may be wondering why are these Balkan nations trying to uh, nationalize a language because all of these languages are absolutely or not absolutely but almost the same with very minor differences and a good answer to your question is um, summed up by Machiavelli who then who once said that nation building is um, could be a historic amnesia what that means is that what you do is that you for once nationalizing a language you do um, forget about diversity and you focus on a shared identity. And so language could also be used to forge a new identity. And an example of that would be, uh, as you can see right now in uh, Spain, and you have a Catalan, you have Galician, you have Basque and you have Occitan. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but all of these are languages um, that are spoken in Spain and people use them and these these little um I, these little differences could sometimes mean a lot because as you remember in yugoslavia we had three um three main uh, languages which was serbo croatian montenegrin and uh, slovenian and tito the president of that time was trying to homogenize the country, make it as a one country, one, uh, you know, identity. Whereas right now, all of these languages are scattered around and they're being used for national identity. And this is the end of your history lesson with us today. Uh, let's just sum up all the, the key points that uh, today we discussed. So basically, I was trying to uh, to let you guys know to teach you that Bosnian is indeed internationally recognized as an official language and in Bosnia obviously we have we also recognize Croatian and Serbian so it's not just the Bosnian language um, and you can read about this all over the news everywhere in the books um, but that's the case. Uh, Bosnian language is a, a language from the South Slavic language family along with, you know, Croatians, Serbians, and, and um, 
Macedonian and so forth. So um, what happened in that uh, time and how the Bosnian language came about, as we know about Austro-Hungary uh, was in Bosnia, Ottomans were there. Uh, the, at that time it was Kingdom of Yugoslavia and the Yugoslavian uh, president of, the, of that time, Josip Broz Tito, was trying to homogenize the country, create one official language, and um, have people kind of share the same identity. However, that failed, as we all know. And so today what we have is um, uh, we have three uh, different languages with they are very similar. So that uh, breakup and nationaliz nationalization increased differences between Serbo-Croatian languages. Uh, today, this is a small fact, but it's true. We have over 2.5 to 3.5 million uh, people who identify as Bosnian who speak Bosnian language and we have over 20, 21 million uh, people who say that they speak Serbo-Croatian and if you quite honestly if you ask me I would probably say I speak Bosnian and I would also tell you that I speak Serbo-Croatian which which is why the the, the number for um, Serbo-Croatian is higher. That would be all for today. Uh, thank you for learning how to speak Bosnian and where this a language uh, came from and I also want to thank you for your interest in this language. It really makes me happy and proud that so many great people want to learn my language. Uh, please, if you have any comments, uh, questions, concerns, leave them in the comments below. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to like us, to subscribe and I can't wait to talk to you guys soon. Ciao!